uh, folks who are staying, thanks for staying. And uh, let me start my talk. So I'll be talking about Chatwood. Uh, before I jump into the whole thing of what Chatwood is, let's like skip the boring, like go through the boring part. Uh, let me talk about myself. My name is Shivam. I am the lead product engineer at Chatwood. Uh, that basically means uh, any bug fixes, any performance issues, any new features, uh, they come to me, I do them in a week, and then we are, uh, all go home happy. Uh, before this, I have been, I worked at the wonderful teams at uh, Frappe and Deep Source. Uh, at both places, I dabbled with on both on back end and the front end, uh, almost equally. And uh, I've been working with Chatwood for the past eight months. And uh, if you want to see my GitHub profile, it's SCMH. I'll have a link to, uh, if you want to talk to me, I'll have a link at the end of the presentation. But yeah, uh, that's about me. Now let's skip to the more interesting part about Chatwood. So Chatwood is an open source communication platform. Uh, if your company or your organization use something like you know Intercom, Zendesk, or anything, uh, Chatwood is uh, the first alternative to it. And uh, with Chatwood, you can basically connect any social media outlet out there, uh, whether it be, let's say, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. OK, Twitter not anymore. Thanks, Elon Musk. Uh, but uh, let's say Telegram, Line, or whatever. Uh, we can, uh, you can just set up Chatwood with a single command uh, using our CLI. And you can uh, start running. So that's about Chatwood. Uh, all of this is managed with a single dashboard. We come with a lot of features, like reports, insights, uh, capacity management, and everything. So. Yeah, if you want to give this a try, again, links at the end. Uh, these are some photos of our outings. We are a remote team. We don't get to meet uh, a lot. But whenever we do, it's at a quite nice place. So yeah, uh, that's us. So Chatwood started uh, in, you know, as a side project for the co-founders of the team. Uh, they are in the United States right now, trying to make money for us. Uh, but. Uh, they, it started as a side project with them and a couple of their friends and was dormant for a while. Uh, the whole story is on YouTube. But the crux of the matter is that uh, one day in November, uh, Pranav, our founder, wakes up and uh, decides let's post this on Hacker News. And it went viral with uh, over 400 upvotes. And we got a lot of comments. Uh, these are some of them. Uh, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure you can't read them. But uh, if you're curious, just go to uh, Hacker News and search it. But uh, a lot of people were talking about how this was fitting perfectly in their first stack and in their migration to free software. In fact, a uh, lot of people complained about this uh, quote unquote uh, prices of the enterprise plans they were paying for. So just looking at this, uh, the founders realized that there is definitely a space for a product like this, but open source. And uh, the fact that uh, a lot of uh, G compliances like GDPR was still in their infancy in some sense, and uh, just the fact that a lot of organizations wanted to own their own data and not you know, feed it to some uh, big tech third party. Uh, from that perspective, chat would fit right in place. So we looked at that, uh, realized, OK, there's a lot of potential, uh, continued building it. Uh, the traction that we got on Hacker News was spotted by the India OS team, uh, which I was a part of before. And uh, Pranav, our founder, gave a talk. You can scan the QR code if you want to see the talk. It's very interesting. But yeah, uh, I mean, on a side note, uh, India OS was sort of the prelude to the conference we are at today. I was one of the organizing members back then, and it feels amazing to be, you know, giving a talk here right now, uh, seeing so big it has become. So kudos to the team who has kept this spirit alive. So yeah, uh, and again, jumping back, uh, we launched, uh, we got accepted in Y Combinator Winter 21 batch. Uh, we raised some funding. And did the official YC you know, uh, launch on in March 2021. And again, uh, a lot of great comments. And a lot of people who are already using Chatwood were extremely happy to see uh, you know, the successes and the kind of uh, you know, places we wanted to go with the product. So yeah, again, some more of those comments. This uh, post also went uh, quite popular on Hacker News with over 300 upvotes. And uh, what we did was uh, we kept building and released in December of the same year, Chatwood version 2. And this version, in a lot of ways, cemented the position of Chatwood uh, as a serious player in the market. So let's say, you know, from going to, you know, OK, I'm building a startup. Let me see what tool I can use. Chatwood looks fine. Let me install or, you know, sign up to actual enterprises or like large players who a lot of uh, value depended on fast, really quick turnaround in customer support, started using Chatwood. We saw a lot of uh, companies uh, 
who are in the same domain, just building on top of Chatwood and selling the product. And that again was a lot of validation. And that was the Chatwood 2.0 release. Some features, like we introduced a whole new dashboard UI, uh, a lot of advanced filters, some deeper integration with WhatsApp, uh, and open API compliant docs. This was a very critical one, uh, because a lot of our customers, or let's say users, uh, do use Chatwood only as an API server and deeply integrate it in their dashboard. Uh, we also had IMAP and SMTP support, which was lacking surprisingly. But yeah, uh, this was the release, and uh, again, we continue to build. So after Chatwood 2.0, we introduced a host of new features. Uh, you know, we introduced our own help center, so you can just write documentation and publish it on your own domain, and uh, that can be linked across the dashboard anywhere and on your chat widgets. We released automations, so let's say you know if a message is coming from a certain email, automatically assign a priority to it. Let's say if it's an enterprise customer or a premium customer, automatically assign a high priority to it. Uh, macros, you know, a lot of things that you uh, do on the dashboard manually a couple of times repetitively. You just do it in a single click. Uh, capacity configuration. Let's say you you know your capacity of your uh, support teams or your customer relationship teams. Accordingly, you can just distribute the chat a lot more. Uh, we also added video call integration with Diet, which is a provider. Uh, added dark mode to the widget. Uh, we had built a widget builder so that visually you can see how the widget will look before publishing it on your website. Added support for RTL, uh, which made made the pr uh, product available and accessible to a lot of people, uh, who, especially in the Middle East. We introduced the Chatwood CLI, so one command, install Chatwood on a server, uh, done. We introduced a feature, a uh, couple of features with OpenAI. I'll dive into that a bit more. Uh, but yeah, uh, we built, continued building for a cup, uh, couple of months and years. And eventually, uh, this August, we released Chatwood 3.0. Uh, and that was, in a lot of ways, a fundamental uh, release for us. Because this, uh, in a lot of ways, set the direction for Chatwood. We realized we have a huge breadth of features. But now what the customers and the market genuinely seems uh, to look forward to is the depth of these features. And that is where Chatwood 3.0 comes into the picture. We added a native AI assistant. So it can talk to your agents uh, or customers on your behalf. This is still in beta. A uh, couple of questions, it just you know uh, gives up and says, OK, let me assign you an agent. But it can answer questions based on your website data. I'll scrape through it. And we realized that uh, a lot of customers come through and don't read anything on your website and just start a chat. And a lot of their questions can be answered by the data on the website. And I think the proportion is about 30 to 50%, which this bot aims to kill. And we are keeping very uh, uh, you know, practical and pragmatic expectations with the technology. Uh, LLMs are great, but uh, these are not perfect tools. So yeah, our skepticism remains, but we are still very confident that uh, LLMs are going to get really good in the future. Uh, beyond these, uh, there is uh, writing assistance. So if you write a message, you want to change the tone, you want to check the grammar, uh, you want to you know make it shorter. All of that can happen with Chatwood. Uh, let's say labels are an integration pa integral part of uh, triaging any conversation. So labels, uh, you based on the conversation history, we can automatically j suggest labels that are most relevant. And this has been a good feature. The other, uh, dark mode, uh, I know we are a bit late to the bandwagon, but uh, a lot of the enthusiasts in the community were looking forward to it, and it's here. So yeah, uh, fun fact, uh, we moved our entire styling, almost entire styling to Tailwind. It was all done by one engineer in three weeks. So yeah, I mean, uh, Kudos to Sivin for that if he ever watches this conference. Uh, next, health center and widgets. Uh, so the articles were uh, there published on a website, but the user had to go to a separate link and do it. There's a lot of context switch. And especially in cases, let's say you run an e-commerce company, you don't want them going out of the product page, right? So the health center was introduced inside the widget, so you can browse there. Uh, search, we had a full-fledged uh, search ins right inside it. Uh, we did better reports, introduced some metrics, a new layout. You know, we made this sort of a foundation bed for new insights. We have been working with a lot of companies together uh, to build this. And uh, the new metrics and the new reports will come soon in the future. I cannot commit on a timeline, but it will be there soon. But yeah, uh, these are like the features. But let me talk about numbers, OK? And uh, primarily, let's, let's start with uh, community numbers. So we are about to reach 17,000 stars. Uh, 
we have more than 3000 prs merged the app is translated in over 50 languages uh, and out of which over 20 languages last i checked was uh, had over 80 percent coverage uh, so that's extremely great uh, we have about 280 contributors and uh, by the way the language contributions were done all by the community outside the team so again we are very grateful for that uh, we have known 6,000 self-hosted instances uh, which are active even today. Uh, we know this because we run a community server uh, to run uh, some notification systems and everything so that uh, other people don't have to host it because it's a bit heavy to run. But yeah, uh, self-hosted instances, 6,000. Uh, we have over 3,000 members on our Discord. Uh, coming to the SaaS that we uh, run, uh, and this is just to tell you about how well the app is scaling. Uh, we have 28 million messages processed in our entire lifetime. Uh, we have about 3.6 million conversations in our database right now. 500 teams use our SaaS daily, and uh, there are over 35,000 users uh, on the platform. And our uptime is 99.96%. Uh, the last nine is missing because of a small incident that was completely out of our control, but uh, yeah, it's way better than our competition. So this, these numbers are quite good. Uh, and all of this has been achieved through a very boring stack. Uh, we managed to do all of this without uh, rewriting it in Goal, Rust, or Zig, uh, you know, without splitting the monolith into microservices. We did it without Kubernetes. Uh, so yeah, uh, just Postgres, uh, Rails, Vue, and Heroku. And uh, it, has been doing, it has been serving us really nicely. Uh, in fact, only recently have been uh, reaching the edges of the performance that these systems can provide by default. And we are still not worried because it's running, running very healthily. But uh, that being said, it's not that we are not focusing on performance. Uh, these are the peers that have been merged in the past uh, seven or eight months. And uh, particularly focused on the contacts table, which has about, uh, I think, 75, yeah, I have it, 75 million rows. Uh, so yeah, some of, of the slowest queries were taking 12 seconds. We brought it down to two seconds, uh, under two seconds, 1.2 to be specific. Uh, then we uh, did more optimizations. Some queries that were taking about like 18 seconds, we brought it down to 10 milliseconds. And all of this uh, without changing the underlying architecture, uh, simply by just adding better indexes. So yeah, again, goes on to say that uh, you know, the st systems we use by default are really performant. We just need to know them better. Uh, we recently faced some issues with concurrency, and this is one of like a bona fide moments for a company like ours, where you know you have reached a scale uh, where your webhooks are coming to in together. So uh, if you have ever built distributed systems, you know uh, how like uh, such, uh, such a hassle this can be. But yeah, we implemented a very, very simple mutex uh, using Redis as the base. Again, uh, we didn't migrate to Kafka because uh, that wasn't the practical thing to do. So yeah, we have been facing some scaling issues uh, and we have been working on those, but so far uh, we are not worried. Oops, spoiler. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I mean, goes on to the point of uh, in some sense, our engineering culture, and which I've seen a lot of FOSS companies embrace, is that they are very pragmatic with their approach to tech and uh, realize the kind of uh, foundations they have to build. So no cargo cults, OK? You don't use Rust because XYZ is using Rust. We don't switch to Kafka because, let's say, Zerodha is using Kafka. Uh, you know, we will switch to Kafka when we, we, need, we find the need. So yeah, I think uh, this pragmatic approach has served us really well. And it is paying off in the way that uh, the community finds it extremely easy to install Chatwood and run it at scale. In fact, the biggest instance we know is almost twice the size of Chatwood Cloud. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's been running really good. The other thing, even though all your engineering and everything is going fine, you know, some things out of your control have a way of you know, dropping a giant X-shaped bomb on you. So yeah, uh, Elon Musk took, takes over Twitter and uh, before renaming it to X, uh, he decides to increase the API price to such an obscene amount. I feel ashamed talking about it here. But uh, yeah, it was so extreme that uh, we would have uh, run through all the money we ever had in a matter of, like, within a year. And uh, we as a funded company, uh, you know, also that, you know, all our eggs were not on uh, in one basket. We still had other mediums could switch to. But a lot of independent creators and developers out there who relied on Twitter APIs just had to kill the product. And that's just sad. 
so yeah uh, this happened and uh, we decided to you know deprecate the uh, twitter channel eventually removing it so slowly slowly we'll remove the code that is in our code base but yeah uh, ever since 3.0 we had 3.1 3.2 of course uh, again uh, really good releases bunch of features bunch of bug fixes uh coming on to what's next and this is the interesting part uh so we are rebuilding our mobile app from the ground up we are working with timeless a beautiful design company from chennai uh we are rebuilding our uh, help center to be have faster search better ui to navigate uh we still have a lot of features that we are uh, work, like we want to continue to push improve report and insight multiple conversations in a widget deeper integrations with channel apis let's say you know red recipes uh, retrying messages properly uh, just uh, going deeper with the apis that these platforms provide us better help center experience of course improved widget design speeding up critical code paths there are a lot of challenges i think a lot of them rely on the front end where our uh, the code of the front end was pre predominantly written when the lot of best practices didn't exist so our code base is view 2 plus webpack 4 which we want to migrate to something modern uh, we are still facing some issues uh, with the, you know some parts of our uh, obscure parts of our uh, back end where the query still take a lot of time and time out so we are still uh, fixing that but yeah if you are interested just take a look at the code base it's a standard ruby on rails code code base with a view app using webpacker again uh, thanks to these con uh, contributors i think uh, of all the things i told you this is by far the best thing we have built so far uh, it, um, amazing community and i have yet to see a single release that we have made which didn't have a community pr so again uh, thanks to all the contributors that have uh, you know given us their time and you know contributed in spirit we always wake up uh, in the morning with like one of these messages across uh, you know this the setup is done is from uh, vishal uh, from foss united they tried out chatwood but yeah uh, i think this is good as any note to end this uh, talk on so yeah uh, thank you so much and these are the links you can scan them uh by the way if you are a non profit or open source organizations you can use chatwood completely free on our saas so yeah just sign up and just hit hit us a message we'll give you a coupon code thank you so much <laughs> questions uh there was a cell phone tracking like um uh, in one of your slides there was a mention that uh this number of self hosted versions have been yeah uh, how are you tracking it when it so uh, there is a server which uh, manages some telemetry for us uh, let's say when you use the cli you can opt out of it uh, that uh, when you install chatwood and when you run some health checks and everything the cli manages to send us some data uh, saying that uh, you know uh, this is a server which is live uh it's completely optional if you have an air gap system the server like the cli won't fail it'll run but yeah that is how we know for a fact uh, that we have that another thing about the twitter api thing like once it goes like up obscure amount of amount has been raised uh, is it deprecating the thing is a solution but the support is al always required by the users when they are using it yeah but uh, we realize with lot of customers right uh, which we wholeheartedly support our uh, small to medium sized businesses and startups and most of them don't have the money to pay for twitter apis like uh, if you are like an apple google or you know mintra or something definitely you can pay up for it but most people can't pay up for it and for us uh, it does not i mean uh, we try to be community first and from that perspective our time is better spent on you know making sure the rest of the features are working fine other than you know just looking at twitter because you know they are the other one who have like the biggest wallets so yeah i mean if someone wants twitter and it chat would doesn't work for them then i'm i'm sorry but yeah that's it uh, any more questions uh, thank you so much <laughs>